Aura. You're listening to the Intel by Aura podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Intel podcast series. I'm Tal, a content producer with Aura and one of the producers of this show. In this episode, we are sharing a conversation with Walmart's Wade Shillow and John Bashoff, where they talk all about how they're empowering their frontline associates with retail crime intelligence. This conversation was part of a webinar by the Loss Prevention Foundation and hosted by our own Bobby Haskins. Hope you enjoy. We're just going to do a little fireside chat here today. Uh, you can know, gather around our microphones, our computers. So, um, you know, for, for the audience, I'm going to ask a few questions. We're just going to kind of let the conversation go and, and see where see where we land. So um, I think the biggest thing and, and one thing that I always like to focus in on is, uh, hey, we're we're humans, right? And a lot of the times we talk just about what we do at work and what our roles are and, and what we're leading and, and what we're focused in on. Um, so the first you know, couple minutes here, John and Wade, I'm, I'm going to put you a little on the spot. I'm going to have you introduce yourselves, who you are, what you do for Walmart, maybe a little bit of, of your background. But I'm going to throw a curveball after you introduce yourselves, and I'm going to want to know a little bit about what you like to do outside of work, and maybe what's one of your one or two top hobbies. So, Wade, I see you, I see you smirking and smiling there. So, yeah, uh, first curveball of the of the hour. So, Wade, I'm gonna I'm gonna look to you, have you start. You know, Wade, what do you do for Walmart? What's your current role? And, and give me a little bit of background of how you got where you're at today. Hey, thanks, Bobby. Um... If I would have known that there was a curveball like that, I probably would not have signed up for this webinar. But uh, so I'm a senior manager here with Walmart. Um, I'm on the associate experience team uh, in our asset protection department at the corporate office. Um, my main body of uh, work right now is our case management system or the replacement of our case management system, uh, which we just completed about a year and a half ago. Um, and then from that, uh, from that on, it's building that, that, that criminal intel platform, that case management system, and, and what kind of connections it can have, interactions, um, integrations it can have with current systems that we have uh, in our stores for our AP associates. Uh, I started out with Walmart um, these years ago, pushing shopping carts at a store in Montana, um, made my way through the ranks, different, a couple of different retailers with loss prevention, asset protection, and where I've been with. AP with Walmart since about 2009. Um, it's my second stint with Walmart AP uh, since uh, 2009, but uh, it's been a great journey. I'm excited to be on this call. And I'm gonna say I have a very unhealthy obsession with karaoke um, is what I like to do in my pastime or my, my spare time, what little spare time I have. So um, there's your curveball answer for you. Awesome. I was hoping you bring up uh, bring up the karaoke as you've uh, uh, had me in a few karaoke events, which we know didn't end well at all. So thanks, Wade. I appreciate you kind of sharing about you know your journey and and how you got to the current role. So, John, turn it over to you. You know who who are you? What do you do for Walmart? And then uh, what's what's one of your uh, one of your big hobbies outside of work? Sure. So I uh, appreciate it, Bobby. Um, so I, uh, I I lead a. Um... I'm a senior two manager here for the Walmart investigations team at the home office. Um, specifically, I lead a small <laughs> LRC team um, that we, we, had, we investigate ORC. We obviously have our global investigations partners, but the company recognized um, the problem of ORC. You know, it's probably why we're here talking. is isn't going away. It's getting bigger. Um, and there was some opportunity there to add some uh, resources. So I lead a, a small team that, that goes in and investigates uh, ORC for Walmart. Uh, my career with Walmart's been a little weird. Uh, they recruited me right out of the army. My first job, I was a um, asset protection manager for a, a warehouse for Walmart in Porterville, California. Um, and then I was a Mapham in Philadelphia, a Mapham in South Carolina. In between there, I left the company once uh, to go work for Toys R Us and, and, and Macy's in New York City. Uh, then came back. So it's it's been a journey, but I think it's helped me kind of grow both contacts and kind of see how. Uh, different parts of the country, you know, operate with with as loss prevention is concerned. Um, as far as my hobbies, that I, I have two, and they kind of work together. Uh, first one, I like to barbecue and smoke meat and things like that. And then to counterbalance that, I go hiking with my three dogs, uh, so that it doesn't take over too much. So uh, that's that's what I do when I when I get the opportunity to step away from work. Awesome, thanks, John. And just to preempt the question that I know we will get in the Q and A. What type of dogs do you have? What are the three the three dogs that you're up there hiking with every day? 
So I've got three mutts, three rescues. Uh, two of my dogs we rescued. They were street dogs in Puerto Rico. Uh, so they're they're kind of a little bit of everything. And then another one of my dogs was a stray dog in uh, in West Virginia. And they're just mutts, hounds, pit bull mixes, kind of amalgamation of everything. Awesome. Thanks, John. That's awesome. And I uh, uh, love taking the strays and, and helping and support that. Uh, that's, that's really cool. Good for you. And, and, you know, Wade, I think kind of looking, looking to you, I think everybody knows Walmart, right? Like everyone, you can throw a stone in most, most cities and hit one, two, maybe five Walmarts. Um, but I think it, it would be good just for the audience. If you can just level set a little bit on the size and the scope of the, the Walmart asset protection team, you know, give us an overview of your structure, how many associates, what are their responsibilities and just uh, help level set with the audience, you know, the, the size and scope that you're looking at at Walmart AP. Uh, yeah, Bobby, as you said, we have a pretty good, pretty good size footprint, uh, several countries, including the U S um, as far as asset protection uh, goes, we have a very healthy amount of folks working for us. Um, as of last count, there's over 18,000 um, associates from the entry level investigator role all the way up to home office AP, global investigation, and then even John's team here, uh, we just stood up at the office. You think about that in size of a potential police department or, or, or the nearest police department, we would be second in the nation just um, under the New York police department in size of the amount of folks that we have working for us in AP. Awesome. And in the stores, are those, all those associates, you know, what are they focused in on? Is it uh, loss prevention? Is it safety security? Kind of what's their, what, what is their purview in the store? Our uh, AP teams are really the jack of all trades in the stores, um, especially our AP investigators and our AP ops coaches. Um, they dabble in everything from internal investigations to shoplifting apprehensions or detentions, um, and, uh, even safety store security, keeping our associates and our customers safe. That's really the ultimate goal of our AP team is keeping our customers and our associates safe um, while, while, while they're in our stores. Perfect. Awesome. So just kind of, you know, getting into some additional questions and some, some thoughts, I think before we, you know, talk about, you know, Wade, you talked about, you've been using the retail crime intelligence platform for, for the last year and a half. Um, but, you know, Wade and I, we met about four, four plus years ago, uh, um, I think it was my second or third week at Aura, uh, and I was down in, down in Bentonville, uh, visiting you all and, and talking about a, a potential pilot of using the, our platform and, and comparing it against a few different options that are out there. Um, so it's been, it's been a journey, right, Wade? And we've, we've had a, had a great journey, but I think as like for the audience, as you were, you know, four years ago, as you, as Walmart was thinking about moving away from your current incident management and case management system, like what inspired that change? What caused that change? And what were some of the things that you were looking for in, in a new initiative or a new, new system? Well, that, to be flat out honest with you, we needed a change, right, Bobby? We had a system that was, I don't know, 16 years old. It served its purpose, but we, we really gathered no intel out of that system. It was very difficult to pull information and get insights, get intel. Um, and, and we really needed a system that would provide our field level, our entry level associates, a quick way to enter cases all while we're able to get intel out of, out of the platform. Um, I, I've told you this numerous times. I'm not sure how much the audience knows, but our old system, if you keyed in a case correctly, it took you about 72 minutes to key in a shoplifting case. It's almost an hour and a half that our associates were off the sales floor, um, unable to prevent more loss or, or keep our stores safe. A uh, new platform uh, has been game changing. Um, it has changed the ways of working within our organization and led to the, the forming of teams like John's team with the intel that we're getting. Um, from an RC standpoint, it's just been absolutely phenomenal. But like, it takes our, our associates about 11 minutes to enter a case now. That's probably a, you know, over a hundred percent reduction in, in uh, case entry time. And it gets our associates back on the sales floor um, to prevent more loss and keep our associates, our customers safe. Yeah, I mean, I, that 70 number still just shocks me. And we, and we talk, we talk about it a lot, right? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of time where they could be focused elsewhere, right? Focused on safety, focused on who else is walking in, into the building. Um, 
you know, Wade, as you were as you were going through the you know the trial, the proof of concepts, and the and the different initiative to to get where you are at today, um, with with the new the new system that you're using, like what were some of the like key learnings and and aha moments as you were going through that as you were as you were trialing? I think the biggest thing is there's probably a lot of people on this call thinking through, hey, we've had the same system for ten years, twelve years, you know, maybe even more. Um, it can be painful to make make a switch. So what were some of those learnings that you had through the proof of concept, through the trial, and how can you share some of those with the audience? Um, so for me, it all boils down to what I used to say is chasing ghosts, right? Uh, we had systems that were not designed for the folks that were in the office catching shoplifters. Um, you didn't know who the people that were hitting your stores unless you got a notification from global investigations that there was a, a, a prolific subject hitting your stores. Um, our first kind of foray into, or an aha moment, I guess you would say is, uh, we had a store in Fire Oklahoma, uh, 9,000 people, uh, one API, one API ops coach. API was watching the, uh, look, watching the aura feed, uh, getting his intel, went out to the sales floor, um, just doing his rounds and saw a suspect that was uh, very prolific had been moving from the West Coast to the East Coast and back. Um, and, and John, I know John has numerous stories like this um, as well. I'll let him to speak to speak to a little bit of it. Um, but the aha moment was really when they made the apprehension and the the officers that responded were just, you know, going through the, their motions and we're going to write up for a simple shoplift. And the, the API said, no, 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 I don't think you understand. Look, look at this suspect's activity. You know, showed him a map, showed him the 40 plus events, the hundred thousand plus dollars in merchandise loss that he had caused our company uh, in his travels. And they put a hold on that suspect and we were able to ab- aggregate charges um, beyond a simple shoplift. And I think that intelligence is what has been needed um, in the industry for a while when it comes to criminal intel systems um, and case management systems. But that was really our aha moment. We knew that we needed to do something different around ORC. And then I'll, I'll turn it over to John. I think John has numerous examples as well. And I'm not sure, John, what your aha moment was, but that, that definitely is mine. Yeah, I think for me, it's, <laughs> it's the ability to track people through Aura and then find out that you got to remember that people who shoplift, that's not the only crime they're doing, unfortunately. So s- some of them can be really dangerous actors in our stores. So, you know, one of the biggest aha moments as we kind of have started this this new team uh, was was getting a, someone who was doing a, a scam in, in uh, our stores, uh, getting them off the street and finding out the, some of the other charges that person had waiting for them. And then just thinking, wow, that's, that's a person I'm glad is not interacting with my associates, with my customers that is is no longer in our stores uh, beyond shoplifting or overseer or anything like that. So I think it's been just, uh, you know, I call it, I don't know if Bobby's going to like me saying this, but I call it the Facebook for shoplifting because it's so it's so easy to function in and out of it. Uh, and, and it's helped us. And that, that was my aha moment, though, is just kind of realizing that that using it, we were able to keep a violent person out of our stores. Well, well John, I uh, not to over or, or take over Bobby's role here, but I heard one better than uh, the Facebook for shoplifting. I heard Crookbook this week. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if, if Aura wants to coin that, but Hey, I did see a question come in. I think it fits nicely into this part of the conversation, Bobby, but, um, somebody asked about aggregating existing case data into, um, Aura. I, I will say that we were in all transparency off the bat. We're like, yeah, we've got to merge our old data into Aura. And then we just started looking at it. The data was just so dirty. Um, it was so, you know, we, we had such incomplete I want to say from a case management perspective, but the data was just rough. We had a hundred cases on the same suspect with diff, you know, a hundred different IDs. It was just impossible to move that over, that data over. And I'll say that in our in our first year and a half, almost two years with Aura, you know, thirty some odd percent of our offenders are re- reoffending. So I tell the associates, you know, you're going to see them again in the platform. Don't worry about looking them up in the old system. You're going to see them again uh, more than likely in a new platform. So great question. Um, as far as the aggregation of data is concerned. Awesome. Thanks, Wade, Wade and, and John. You know, um, the Facebook of shoplifting, you know, doesn't doesn't bother me. You might stay away from that second one, Wade, uh, on the on the aura side, but you know, that is what it is. Um, I think like those are all great aha moments. 
But what we're missing is how did you get to that point? And to get to that point, it's it's quality intelligence, right? It's structured data. You know, Wade, you just talked about in your old system, it was, you know, dirty data, garbage in, garbage out. So from Walmart's perspective and, and using, you know, the Aura and the retail crime intelligence platform, how are you empowering the front line? Like, what are you focusing in on with your front line to get quality intelligence? And what are some of those things that they're entering into the platform that gets you those big aha moments, those large cases that are breaking open? Talk to, talk to me a little bit more around what you're focused in on there. Um, so for me, it's, I'm heavily involved in the training aspect. And I will say that, um, the platform has done a really good job of providing the resources to our associates for them to be successful. Uh, we've created some, you know, videos, we've created, uh, help documents, but ultimately it's been that, that, that training push as we've kind of wanted to get out of the habit of, uh, you know, garbage in garbage out. But the system makes it so easy. It's big buttons. It's something that our folks are used to. Our folks that are in the stores catching shoplifters or detaining shoplifters and, and, and making and entering these events, they're very used to Facebook. They're very used to Twitter. They're very used to YouTube. So they need something that's simple. They're not going to read an instruction book, right? So you've got to make it so straightforward for them to key in things like tattoos and, and, and vehicle information and what kind of clothing it is. And they can do that in under like 12 minutes um, has been phenomenal. I know John, John, you talk a lot about on our training calls about um, suspects and, and you, your guys, your team tying cases in with like their yellow shoes or, or the, the hoodie that they're wearing. And I don't know if you want to explain a little bit more about that, but I think those, that provides a great real life example. Sure. It's, it's so some of the suspects we deal with, they're not getting apprehended every time, right? Obviously. So say we have someone, you know, Wade Shillow, who breaks into registers all throughout the country. And Wade Shillow is hitting every other day. We had a case just like that where we thought the person had gone quiet for weeks or months at a time. So maybe they got picked up for another arrest. Maybe they're in jail somewhere. We don't know about it because they're so mobile. We can't check in with, with every uh, law enforcement agency. And then we started kind of data mining through Aura, just searching out certain details about the person. He would wear a specific set of, of Nike Dunks, right? So just 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 Googling that. And all of a sudden we say, okay, hold on. They're, they're not, he, he hasn't stopped hitting. It's just the store didn't know what his name was. So they have him in as an unknown person. But then that allowed us to, as we're searching, to kind of, again, to build that map and see where they were offending, whether, uh, you know, this guy happened to be through the Southwest. But you, it really does, the functionality of searching, you know, that specific set of shoes, or we've got a guy we're watching now that's got a tattoo on his neck. So searching out some of those details where that, you know, that store doing a great job getting someone in the office, that's where all of our cases start, right? If my, my team doesn't exist if uh, the detectives in the stores can't get people in the office uh, safely. So, but they might not know their name, but by giving us that search functionality, we're able to tie those cases together. Quality, uh, quality events, quality intel is like one thing that we've been really driving and John's has been really driving with our investigations call that we have. And it's really started that they really start to see the, the movement of that in the platform. I think, um, it's, it, it, John, it's interesting that story that you tell about, you know, the, the subject wearing Nikes, right? And um, I put my, you know, former AP, LP practitioner hat on and, and we talk in this industry, we have a language and usually that language is describing individuals until we know who they actually are, right? We describe how they look, what they're wearing, what products are they going after? You could probably talk to any store manager um, or any LP, AP professional in the store, and they're going to tell you and be able to describe in that language the last 10 people that have stolen from them or their top 10 people. So how how is Aura capturing and how is Walmart using that information? How are you getting that into the platform, that structured data, that description of that individual? And how, do, like, how are the associates connecting those dots on those people so you can aggregate and make that faster? I'm going to take that one, John. No, I'll, I'll, I'll start Wade. You're the expert. I know you'll come in. You're the, we call Wade the aura Yoda here at Walmart. <laughs> um, but what, what I'll kind of answer to that is, is Wade has done an awesome job and, and, and it's kind of helped me kind of teach my team too, is to stop and do the teaching and training when it's available, right? This, you know, as aura rolled out, 
there was a lot of not great case input, right? Because it's only whatever you put in is what we're going to be able to take out of it. Um, but I think slowing down and doing a lot of teaching and training, we've dedicated a lot of time to it. Wade and I are on, you know, a conference call with either a region or a BU at least once a week, uh, teaching and training and, and telling them what good data looks like, what good intel looks like, how not to skip out on any detail they think is small. And uh, I think it's kind of called like wildfire a little bit. It's not perfect yet. Uh, we continue to, to teach and train. And, you know, as I'm going through the day, you know, we've had rough moments. We've had moments where a prosecutor or a law enforcement agency has said, hey, I can't do anything with this. You've got no video in there. The pictures aren't good enough or whatever it is. Uh, and that's a teaching and training moment. I think, you know, my my team, I know the global investigations team has done it. Uh, just taking that time to to teach and train those frontline associates as to what good looks like. No, that's perfect. John hit it on the head. Um, the, the training has to be constant, um, especially if you're going from a, a legacy system to a brand new system. Um, lots of great things about the platform. Um, I would honestly retire and go back to being a floor walker just to use Aura sometimes because I, I, I try to get in it any, any chance I get. But that training piece and that change management piece has been so important. I mean, as that groundswell starts to build, we've seen it even on um, our our intercommunication sites like uh, Workplace. Uh, a year and a half ago, you used to see, you know, shout outs for a hundred dollar case or a hundred and twenty five dollar case, but the amount of thousand dollar bus recoveries that I'm tagging John in or John's tagging me in now that we're seeing on Workplace um, has been crazy, and that just goes to show you that with the intel, they're changing their focus um on where they're looking in the stores right so you get that quality intel or the quality events you get that quality intel they know who their big hitters are they're moving away from these smaller dollar events uh, and and they're they're getting the bigger fish so to speak so it's it's been quite the journey but um constantly evolving um constantly finding new ways to train our associates um innovative the aura team has been super helpful i mean there is a chat support if they need help um I wish a lot of apps uh, in the industry had that chat support and it's real people, right? Um, I've been on, on the road for the last three weeks and every t every store has talked about chat support. And I know that we're not here to talk about that, but uh, just getting that that one-on-one that -on -one help from a real person. When they're stressed about entering a case, they're they're unsure, they want to get that intel out there, they forgot how to do something. It's just been, it's been quite an amazing um, change in our organization when it comes to criminal uh, intelligence. Wait, Wayne, I think that um, there was a question that came in the Q and A that probably dove, dovetails nicely into um, your conversation there around the customer success and customer support teams. Um, the question was: Is what what was the timeline? Um, what was the timeline for a national or nationwide rollout at for Aura? at Walmart, you know, 5,200 stores between Walmart and Sam's Club, you said 18,000 associates. Walk me through the, the initial rollout. How long did that take? What did, uh, what did that look like? And uh, what were some of the learnings that you had there? Man, I will tell you that, and, and you remember this, we wanted to do this huge phased approach. And I think it was like 20 plus weeks. And uh, we wanted to do this really slow rollout. And that's probably on us because of our experience launching things in the past. You know, you get to pushing something to 500 stores, things start to break a little bit, right? And so there's that hesitancy to to go fast with something. And uh, with Aura, we launched in eight weeks to, like you said, 5,000 stores plus uh, 600 Sam's Clubs. Um, with a, We did six training calls per week. Um, followed by internal communication where the, the resources for the help documents were held. So getting a platform or changing the platform that we had used for 16 years to a brand new platform in eight weeks, um, it was quite the accomplishment. Um, and I think it just kind of boils down to the platform. If it had been anything else, I think we probably would have been pushing really hard for a longer rollout, but um, so easy to use. I can't say that enough. It was just everything aligned correctly for those eight weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Eight, eight weeks, uh, you know, 
I have a few gray hairs that I've pulled out um, because it was it was a fun, but a lot eight a lot of, a lot in that eight weeks. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. And then to see the adoption, right? Like I think Wade were sitting having a conversation last month, and N- NPS for your users was plus seventy. Yeah, uh, which is you know wor- world class. It, they're telling you that it, it fits and it works for them and it and it's successful. So um, pretty cool to see how quickly you were able to scale that up and then get it embedded. So yeah, that few weeks of bed was quite the monumental feat, and also at the same time, it's been quite the the running kind of gold standard around the office. I guess you would say um, if I question a rollout on anything else. Uh, Josh is on the call. He politely has reminded me that I rolled out Aura in eight weeks. So I, I should be able to do everything else much sooner. But uh, so it has been quite the gold standard um, for for me personally um, on any future projects that I'm working on. So uh, good call out, Bobby. Awesome. So I think just kind of transitioning a little bit, right? We've talked about you know the actionable intelligence and and connecting the dots and some of the some of the benefits that you had around um, empowering that front line with an easy to use structured data quality in quality out type approach. Um, how has that changed for your repeat people identification? So, um, do you have more visibility to the top people? that are responsible for the most amount of loss. And, and John, maybe I'll, I'll kind of turn this one over to you since it's it's the purview of your team, but what has changed and, and what are you looking at? Are you <laughs> focusing on a smaller amount of people now? Like just walk the audience through how that actual intelligence has changed and allowed you to focus on repeats. Sure, I think, uh, and I might get the number off by one or two, Bobby, but uh, I think it's like 10% of our offenders are causing you know, 94, 95% of our loss so I think what my team's been able to do is really kind of major in the majors. We used to say in the Army a lot. Uh, but we, we can focus in on the people that are hitting us the most. So my team tracks the top 10 offenders in Aura, uh, make sure that every one of those, I mean, I'm talking about the 10 individuals or groups, um, and make sure every one of those has someone assigned to it. Typically, those offenders are, are tracked by global law investigations because they're they're pretty complex. But um, uh so we track that and then we keep a running portfolio of of cases that we're working on we make sure that they fall into that number where they're they're the top offenders and it's you know it's important to to also i i tell my team to take a day to make sure that you know those those offenders that fall in the dollar amount might not be as impactful for us as but but the stores that are getting impacted, you talk about a ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollar offender. That doesn't sound too big, but for that store, that could be the that could be them making comps for the year. That could be them making a trick number for the year. So we focus on that as well. But I think it allows us to stay organized and make sure that we're focused in on the on the right offenders. And 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 like I said, the the more intel we get in, you, we can keep track of those offenders, whether or not they're getting put in, by just by their mo or by the details around them. So it's been it's been really helpful with that. Awesome. John, I think like the the ten percent of people responsible for ninety-four percent, ninety-five percent of of loss. Um, there was a there's another question that came in at, and I think when I think of ten ninety-four, we talk a lot about organized retail crime, right? And as you're seeing these ten percent of people responsible for that amount of loss, you know, the question is, is is the tool or what you're doing, is it strictly for ORC or is it more of like habitual shoplifters, you know, uh, not as organized as you would typically be used to with ORC? So it does it work for both? Yeah, I think it absolutely works for both. I think, you know, there's been plenty of times where I just had a store reach out to me recently said, hey, this is ORC. This guy travels from Florida up to Ohio and he you know, he shoplifts in every store he's looking at. But, uh, you know, I, as I dug in and researched it, it was a truck driver and everything he was stealing was um, just stuff he needed for the truck, whether it was headphones or, you know, a book to read that night or food or things like that. So to be able to work with the store, it kind of helped to find, hey, this is what ORC is, this is what ORC isn't. Uh, but I think it can definitely be used for just, you know, the individual stores as they kind of track who the shoplifters are, uh, who, who's, you know, hit them habitually, but that might not be ORC and, and help them stay organized as well. Awesome. And then Wade on the, you know, the frontline associate standpoint, right there, you talked about the the prior Oklahoma case, mm-hmm. having that visibility to the top people um, responsible for the most amount of loss. 
how is how are they changing their behaviors and their focus in the store and, and and have you seen any major outcomes you know whether it's additional preventions or products recovered like what what's changing for your end users with that type of visibility yeah i commented a little bit on this earlier but it's really been a shift in and in and a visibility and so who's hitting their stories right you know it's i always joke uh, with APIs when I'm on store visits, it's like it's not that guy taking popcorn chicken that's really making your, uh, it's really causing you to miss your shrink target. It's it's these folks like John talks about, like the 1094 Club that are really making an impact um, to your business and having them shift their focus um, and having them see numbers like uh, I think it was a 270% increase in recovered dollars versus um, previous use of uh, or versus our previous platform is it just shows you that if you give these associates a tool to use that is that they can key in something quick, they're going to use the heck out of it, right? They're going to see the benefits of it. They can see that 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 gentleman that they caught um, that they thought was just a one-time thief is also impacted the, the region 50 to 60 times. And, that, and they can take that to law enforcement or they can send that on to John and John's team can research it and it just has created this whole new ecosystem of investigators, right? Um, and that's been beautiful to see. And there's, there's a great comment that I saw come in about, does it allow you just to search off of descriptions or can you search off of other things? Um, and I'll tag on to that with, the system allows them to search anything really, right? Um, it's constantly evolving. Uh, obviously, there's things that we we have wish lists for, and we, we want to, to to add on to the search functionality. But you can search mos, you can search license plates if you don't know who it is. You know, I would I would have died to have that kind of system when I was in the store as an APA because I knew the guy that ran out stealing formula had like like John said Nike dunks on, and he got into a white beat up. Uh, Toyota with a bumper sticker on the back and it had a license plate. And if I would have been able to search that, I can't count how many times I would have been able to close cases and change it from an unknown person to a known person and really show like my local prosecutor or law enforcement that it's not just a one-time thing. They just come in and take formula. He's doing it all over the region or the market or sometimes the country as we see, you know, they just, that's how they make their living. So we've not had that visibility it's really caused us to, like I said, a new ecosystem of investigators, and it's just been awesome to see. Wait, well, you know, I think you made a great point that it allows our teams to be tactical. Um, I remember, you know, when I was a, a mapum, it would frustrate me if we watched a suspect for three hours and I had two investigators, one on cameras, one on the floor, and we get that person out <laughs> and there's thirty dollars in makeup and a bag of chips. So I'm like, man, we just spent a lot of money for that. Uh, we could have customer service that person and maybe you know focused on focused on something else, but it allows teams to see, you know, you get your shrink number at the end of the year and it's like, oh man, they really got us for this and this and this. But I think Aura, because it allows you to see what they're focused on and trends and things like that to say, hey, you know what, we're really getting hit for, you know, the Red Bull or we're really getting hit for TVs or whatever it is and be a little more tactical um, rather than reactionary. I think that's really uh, unique in AP. I think in AP, sometimes we're back on our heels being reactionary, but this tool really allows us to be uh, uh, tactful. I also want to, somebody asked a question. Sorry, Bobby, I'm going to, you know, Wade talks too much. I thought he was going to start singing ABBA or something too, but um I want to talk about one of the questions says question for John, how has Aura helped you tell the story of crime to business partners that aren't an AP? That's really important, right? Because sometimes in AP, we have to sell ourselves to operators and show our value. And I think Aura with, you know, the map tool or the spider web tool where you can see all the connections. If you're going to a store manager, a market manager, a regional manager and saying, Hey, here's the, here's what I want to do. I want to protect X in the store. Here's why. Here's here's you know one specific group and what they're impacting. Um, it allows you to tell that story with data, which gives you a lot of credibility when you're having a conversation with that operator who's uh, who's talking about dollars and cents. So it's uh, it's it's really just a good, like I said, allows you to have credibility in those conversations. Yeah, and and John and Wade, what about? home office partners, right? Like I, I go back to my days in, in AP and um, yes, shrink shows up in your inventory number in a store. And that's the end point of shrink where shrink can show up. You have merchants that, you know, are impacting shrink based on what they're entering in. And 
And part of AP is always about taking those partners and trying to get ahead of before that shrink shows up in your store. Like has this data, right? This insights of the people, the products, the early warning of of a problem. Has this empowered you internally to have different conversations with different teams at home office? A hundred percent. John probably has more use of this than I do, but I will tell you, um, and I'm not going to start singing the album because that's not my go-to karaoke song, by the way. Um, but, uh, when we first rolled out Aura, I remember we had some stores hit some pretty high strike numbers and we had a BU leap walk over to my desk and say, I want to see what the, the AP staff is doing in Aura. Like I had zero, nobody asked me that about eight or about our previous system. Right. So nobody asked me that. Um, and then when they started seeing these high strike numbers and some stores, they're like, what is that AP staff doing? And I was like, man, this, this tool is really powerful. And then I had some people ask me, can we find out product information? What's our product loss look like? How can I get access so I can see the dashboards? I want to see what my market looks like or my reading looks like. Um, so just to see that engagement from the office with this platform has been quite refreshing. Um, and then more cementing for me that, you know, we, we picked the right platform. Um, but John, I know John has a lot of experience with interaction with different groups at the office because of uh, the platform. So I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, I mean, we've had to justify our existence for that program, which can be terrifying when you, you know, sell your house in South Carolina and move to Arkansas. You want to show your value and Aura has allowed us to kind of show our value and bring, uh, show one, the problem, and then two, that we have a clear path to solving the problem. Um, so it, it's been pretty big. The other thing I was thinking about when you were talking is, I know you were an AP coach at one point, Wade, and I was a map of the one point. It, it was previous systems. It was hard to see what my team did in a week to sit down and say, okay, how productive were we this week? And I think Aura changed that because I could, you know, we don't put quotas or things like that, but I could call a store and say, hey, I know you're, I know you're better than two apprehensions this week. What's going on? And then maybe they're like, hey, we're working on a couple internals, and but that allowed them to kind of speak to their business and me to not hold them accountable as much as just make sure that we're focused on the right stuff and have good good dialogue with uh, with the store teams. And I think Aura was was uh, when we shifted over to it was a big help with that. And John, you bring up one good point. I don't think we've touched on though is we've also been able to look at things outside of the tensions, right? Like. I remember when I was an APA in the store and, you know, I had a map them kind of like you that would call me up and say, Hey, I know you're a little bit better than the two apprehensions you have, uh, in the system, uh, this week. But, uh, I'd felt, I'd be like, man, I feel like I had like a hundred recoveries this week or this month, you know, and we weren't we just, that's something we didn't document in the system and, and we can document that in this system now. And so the APIs in our stores. And also show their value, right? They can say, oh, I have $20,000 worth of recoveries this month. I may have, you know, apprehended or detained five people, but, you know, I've prevented loss 45 other times. And so that also gets them excited and feeds into that ecosystem of them being good investigators and gets them excited about their work because they can show their boss their value. Yeah, and the way they think that's, um, at, you know, as... You know, COVID and, and just everything we've seen with the the spike in violence and aggression. Um, I think that that point right there is how you actually get meaningful safety improvement yeah. for your team, right? Um, it is much safer to get someone to drop product or to provide customer service um, for that individual before they have product in their hands than it is when they have the product, they're ready to go and you're trying to detain them. So that's how you make sure your associates know who they are, what they're going to do, and they can put themselves in a position to stay safe, right? Yep. And, and to maintain that safety. A hundred percent. At the end of the day, I want every single one of our associates and our customer home, the customers to go home safely. And no amount of merchandise in our stores is, is worth them pushing an apprehension versus a, a recovery. So um, great call out. And I think, you know, John, John and Wade want to like this, this whole talk track is is interesting because LP AP a lot of the times is looked at as you know um, almost a cost center right instead of a profit center when we think of how we interact in our organizations um, and Wade you talked a lot about preventions and recoveries um, have you seen any tangible results where you've like the number of units or the number of products that you've been able to keep on the shelves or keep from going out of the store 
Because that's a that's a huge benefit, right? That's how you move from cost center to profit center. Like we're keeping yeah. products on on the shelf for our teams. Um, yes. Yeah, Bobby, and just one comment I, that's all kind of fits nicely into this in, in, in the chat was, you know, there's a lot of talk about apprehensions or recoveries, but the system also allows us to document uh, breaches of trespass, aggressive suspects, intelligence. Um, there's a flea market down the road, or there's a, a, a Facebook guy that's selling our TVs left and right. Like they're keen in everything. So that 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 intelligence that we're gathering has also led us to. Um, I'm probably going to quote it off of a, a few dollars, but I believe it's twenty six thirty million dollars of merchandise that we return to the sales floor that can go back on our sales our shelf for our customers to buy. Obviously, that is an increase in sales that moves us away from being a cost center. You can show the value of you know what we're doing as an organization. Um, and that's a shout out to all the great work that our investigators are doing in the stores. Because it's definitely not me doing it. It's definitely, um, it's it's the, the APIs and, and teams like John and his investigators that are putting this this value back, back in our organization, so. Awesome, thanks Wade. Um, I think transition in a little bit because we're we're getting close to Q and A and we have a ton of questions in the chat and in the Q and A. So if uh, for the audience, if you have more, please um, drop them in because uh, here in a few minutes we'll we'll transition into that. But uh, I think John, you you talked about building cases, right? And I think you you set a a spider web map and a timeline. Um, can you just share more with the audience around how your team is building cases and, and what is that side of the the platform and what is that, what are they doing? Are they spending more time building cases or is it automating a lot of that process? Just walk us through a little bit of how you and your team are, are building those cases. Sure. I mean, you talk about the automated, none of us got into loss prevention because we're really good writers, right? I, I didn't, I'm not going to win the Pulitzer anytime soon. <laughs> And, and sometimes as an investigator, we can rush through things. So I think, you know, having things like that, the automated statement generator uh, for our frontline associates, that's huge. Um, I think that's, that's not something I want my investigators stressing out about whether they use the right form of their, right? So they're just, they're able to, to bang out that statement and then continue to do what they do best, which is investigate. And it's something I have preached to my team as well is, you know, if I can be the one on the conference call or if I can be the one on the training call or if I can be the one doing whatever so that you can just investigate, um, then then I've been successful. So I think it's it's allowed my team to stay organized. The, the cases we work on, um, they're very, they're, you know, they're extremely, they go into a lot of different areas, a lot of different suspects, a lot of different cars. Um, so to keep all that organized, it's provided us with a place to do that so that I can go in without micromanaging, just see what are we working on, how organized is it, and I can quickly see a case recap. Um, and it's allowed my investigators to again to stay stay organized to the point where, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, we, we went to the um, to Indiana to present a case to the FBI along with our global investigations partners. And, uh, you know, the feedback I got was that the FBI agents stood up and were like, Let's go. We're going to go sit on this guy's house tonight. Like this is because we were able to deliver just a very organized, well recapped case where they didn't have to ask a ton of ton of follow up questions. So I think that's been one of the benefits my team's seen with Aura. Awesome. And John, I think we just got a a question in in the chat that feeds off very nicely around that. So um, the question is, you know, when law enforcement responds to an apprehension or sees, you know, the associated cases of these, the 10% of people responsible for 94% of your loss, like how has that improved any sort of felony prosecutions, any case closure rates for you, for you and, and your team? Yeah, I can't throw a number out there, right? Because I, I've, I, I, since I've been back with Walmart, I've only used Aura. So I can't say, well, it's better than what we used before with this, but I can tell you that we're very successful in doing that. Like Wade said earlier, where an API was able to show the Aura screen to responding detectives, you know, we had a guy that got, um, I actually referenced him earlier, who had a, a attempted murder warrant uh, for him. And when he was picked up initially, the police were, we're just going to let him bond out that night. My investigator was able to get on the phone and say, hold on, I can get you some some stuff tonight, but we've got him for over, you know, $150,000 in theft. 
is there any chance you can kind of keep him uh, locked up for the night till I can get this to you? And uh, the officer was able to look at what we were able to provide very quickly, and, and we were able to get those uh, felony charges put on, So and he wasn't able to bond out. So it's been it's been a very useful tool to stay flexible with situations like that. Perfect. Um, so we're going to transition here uh, probably to Q&A, but I think um, the, the last question, John and Wade, have you both ac- ask and answer is, how do you see this approach, this retail crime intelligence approach, changing the game for Walmart in the future, but also for the industry? Um, and I, I would have you both answer that. You may have similar answers. So Wade, why, you know, why don't you go ahead and, and start with that? And then uh, John, you can go ask, ask for Wade. Uh, for me, it really boils down to it's got it's almost like there's no more borders, right? It's not Walmart. It's not Target. We're all we're all facing the same thing. And the more that I interact with law enforcement, and the more that I interact with retailer other retailers on on some of the trips I've been on, I really feel that there is a kind of a revolution when it comes to case management, right? Our officers do great work, but they're also craving intel, right? They want to solve these cases. It's not like they don't want to solve the cases by any means. They just need the intel. They need us to get that information to them in such a, a manner that they could just go right out and, and, and put those guys uh, behind bars in, in many cases, right? Um, and so it's just getting outside of that those walls. And that's something that, um, that, that we're, I can see us in the future getting better at. Um, John's team does a great job of interacting with law enforcement, other retailers, I mean, that's the crux of it. I, I feel we're on the verge of a global uh, kind of criminal intelligence platform here uh, if the right pieces start falling into place, right? Um, and it, it, it's just been an awesome to see. You know, I remember I remember writing down my cases on a carbon copy triplicate form uh, and then typing it into a system that went to the office. And now it takes them, us less than 11 minutes to enter a case. We upload our video digitally uh, we can share with law enforcement, uh, which is something that we've been looking at here uh, recently. Um, and just, I mean, it's just, I can't t- say enough about it, but it, it's been great. And then for me, it's just, it's about to be a global kind of revolution. And that it starts with the quality Intel, right? So um, that's that's my my answer on that that piece. All right. I'll, I'll answer too, Bobby, is, is I'll, I'll keep it quick. I know I want to get into some of the questions, but um, really, I think it's allowing us to play. The best defense is a great offense. And I think it's allowing us to bring the fight to the to the I don't want to say to the shoplifters. Let's put it that way. Um, look, we we can bring the fight to them, so we're not sitting back on our heels, feeling like, oh, what was me? They keep hitting the here, they keep hitting there. We're bringing the fight to them, and I think it's allowing us to kind of adapt that in our business. Is a, is no longer are we just going to sit back, but we're going to with this intelligence, actionable data, we we can keep some of these people all out of our stores for a longer time, and we're bringing the fight to them, and that's what's been exciting. Awesome. Well, John and Wade, I, I couldn't agree more with both of your, your answers there. I think um, we've always, we, there's the General Stanley McChrystal quote, right? And we talk about this a lot. It, it takes a network to defeat or beat a network, right? And I see John John just like loves that quote, right? And um, that that's what it's going to take. But that network can't be paper. That network can't be Excel sheets. That network can't be text messages. It's got to be systematic. It's got to be smart. We need to use technology to help us in this space, work together to identify the top people responsible for all of the loss and all of the violence that we're seeing across this entire industry. So um, great, great. I appreciate you all taking the time. I'm going to turn it over to, to Matt. Um, I know there's some questions that have come in in the Q&A that we'll, we'll whip through here, but uh, Matt, the, the show is yours. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Great information. What a great platform to help us address this problem that every retailer is trying to figure out in today's environment. First question in here is a powerful one. Um, How has empowering the AP and LP team uh, lead to total store buying in among other teams with reducing loss and harm in stores? What have you seen when you go to stores and you talk about this platform? What's their response? Uh, I'll I'll say that it's simple. It's just, it's the intel, right? It's the the data at your fingertips. That's the dashboards. I have math firms that tell me all the time they walk into a meeting with their, their market manager, or their regional manager and say, hey, this is why I want to get 
10 cases of spider wrap is because I've got this group that's been hitting me and this is my top loss item and, and, and here's how many times it's impacted our market and they just have that right on their phone. Uh, they have the order dashboard pulled up. So it's that Intel right there at your fingertips that you can just take to leadership and, and start to make changes almost immediately in your stores. Absolutely. Uh, I love this next question because I used to work loss prevention in a mall. So timeline is everything. Is there a timeline to be able to link to other retailers using the Aura platform in specific areas so that you can basically track them if they've hit your neighboring store? um across the way and really respond in real time to them potentially driving to your store next uh, so i'll take that uh, as best i can it's something that we have been actively looking at um i know that we are starting to get more heavily involved in orcas and maybe john can speak to that that piece a little bit of the, the aura orca platforms that are out there um but as something we were actively looking at, actively pursuing how we can better utilize the system to communicate with our retail partners, um, it's just it's going to it's going to be game changing for sure. And, yeah, and I'll uh, just touch on just from an Orca standpoint, you know, I'm trying to create a kind of education as what what Orcas are, um, so that you know we can build those relationships out. When I was a a Mapham in South Carolina, you know the Dick Sporting Goods Mapham who had the the Rock Hill. To explore because we spoke a couple times, you know, every month, uh, just to kind of, hey, what are you? You're going to start locking up your, you know, your uh, tumblers or whatever it was, just to kind of share that intel because we were seeing the same shoplifters. So I think kind of getting some education around orcas and getting more people to to get involved in orcas is going to be huge with that. Yeah, and that ties into a question I want Bobby to answer. So how do you balance the privacy with the citizen access to what data is entered in the platform? as well as what's shared outside of your own organization to other retailers and even to law enforcement? Yeah, um, there's a, quite a few uh, questions around that. And I think um, from the Aura perspective, uh, privacy is the most important thing that you can do, right? Um, and it's Walmart's data, it's uh, Rexall's data. Um, and we we want to, we don't want other people to have access to someone else's data if it's not approved, if it's not signed off. And the platform does that. The platform naturally allows for connections to be made without sharing additional uh, data or additional PII type data. Um, so, so that's fundamentally built into the Aura platform. Um, each organization can select who sees what, right? So Walmart can choose to share with which, you know, whichever police jurisdiction or law enforcement agency that they want to share with. They can choose to share with specific retailers if they want to. Um, they can move only certain events into an investigation and share just those events with other retailers and other trusted partners. So there's layers of sharing and configuration that each organization can choose to use or not use or find the right level of comfort for their privacy teams. Um, but at the end of the day, if we're all sharing with law enforcement, so if Walmart, if Rexall, if Home Depot, if they're all sharing through the platform, with law enforcement, law enforcement sees the totality of those individuals' offenses, um, where Walmart doesn't see anyone else's data, but the police do. So that's the game-changing piece when it comes to privacy. Um, I think, you know, there was another question in there around how do I balance if I don't have LP, AP in the stores? Um, I see that Kyle Dunn from Rexall, who is the uh, ORC manager at Rexall up in, up in Canada, is on, on this. Um, and... I would say reach out to Kyle and ask him that question uh, because their entire organization doesn't have any LPAP in the stores, but they've empowered their store managers, their key carriers, and they're seeing a 20 plus, improve, 20 plus percent improvement in their shrink numbers year over year. So it works for both organizations, whether you're resourced heavy like Walmart or you don't have any LPAP in your stores. So, yeah, thank, thank you, Bobby. Uh, next question, are there additional technology layers and tools that you foresee incorporating to help investigators work more efficiently with the increase in data that you captured within the platform itself, i.e. do you incorporate other data feeds into your case management platform uh, to make it more meaningful to the end user? Yeah, that's something that uh, we've started working on uh, here as an organization, and we started uh, very recently with an integration with our exception-based reporting tool 
and then how that integrates with Aura. And then there's a lot of talk about some, some things that we can't obviously discuss on this call, but um, integrating, you know, CCTV systems and other other investigative systems and tools and technology um, to the Aura platform. So it's constantly evolving. And, and we started first with our exception-based recording tool. That has been a great, a great help. You can now move investigations from one system to the other without with a click of a button. Fantastic. 